I've made a lot of videos about education over the last few months. When I'm talking about the performance of black students and African students, I often get comments from people saying things like, Nigerian students and Ghanaian students are doing much better than say, Somali students. So in this video, I wanna see if there's any truth to some of these claims. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the London borough of Lambeth is a heartland of the black community here in the UK and has been for, for many decades. Lambeth Council has for many years been collecting data on educational attainment and also the ethnicity of pupils and also the languages that pupils speak at home. And this is going to give us a route into starting to answer our question about comparing the educational attainment of African pupils from different countries. This table here shows you various different languages that were spoken by children in Lambeth going back to 1992 and all the way up to 2018. And you can see there that in 2019, the three largest African linguistic groups were Somali, Yoruba, and Akan or Chui Fanti. In case you don't know, Yoruba is from Nigeria and Chui Fanti, which are part of the Akan family of languages, are from Ghana. So, this is gonna be a good place for us to start to look at some numbers. Looking at the proportion of pupils getting five A to Cs, including English and maths, from 2009 to 2019, generally speaking, you look at the green line there, generally speaking, in most years, Yoruba-speaking children in Lambeth have scored the highest, with, generally speaking, Chui Fanti speaking and Somali speaking pupils in joint second place, roughly. Now, when it comes to Somali pupils, there's at least one really important point that you have to bear in mind when you're considering their educational outcomes. And we're gonna to touch on that right now. This table here lists the primary school pupils in Lambeth in 2017, no, 2018 rather, according to the language that they spoke at home and shows their proficiency in English. So the higher up the table they are, the lower the English proficiency is on average. And we can see that in regard to the three groups that we're focusing on in this video, only 32% of Somali pupils in Lambeth in 2018, primary and nursery school pupils that is, were proficient in English compared with 50% of Yoruba pupils and 52% of the Chui Fanti speaking pupils. And when we look at secondary school pupils in that same year in Lambeth and look at their English proficiency, prof proficiency there is still a gap between Somali pupils and the West African pupils here. Somali pupils, 75% of them were proficient in English versus 85% of Chui Fanti pupils and over 90% of Yoruba pupils. The reason this is important is because proficiency in English is very closely correlated with educational outcomes here in England, which makes sense. If you can speak the language of instruction, you're going to generally speak and do better in education, which is being, which is being taught to you in that language. The gaps between the, the Nigerian, Ghanaian and Somali pupils are quite small. And in my opinion, those gaps will be explained or potentially even reversed i.e. potentially the Somali pupils will, will be the highest achieving if you factored in English proficiency and only looked at those pupils who were proficient in English. But what about A-levels? We have some data for the academic year of 2016, which looks at the educational outcomes at A-level of Nigerian, Somali and Ghanaian pupils. And you know how we got this information? It's because somebody made what's called a freedom of information request. These requests or FOI requests can be made by any citizen here in the UK to get to any public body. It could be the local government, local authority, it could be the education system, it could be the police. Any of these public bodies, public civil servants, if you like, are bound to give us the data that we ask for it within reason, of course. And this is a really important tool that I think that we should be making a lot more use of to get more granular and deep data that we need to have these kinds of conversations that we're having. So first of all, when you're looking at the average point score, there isn't that much of a difference here, as we can see from this chart. Somali pupils are a little bit lower. Their average point score was slightly lower at 25. But what's important to point out is that those scores would all be, would all result in, in, the, same gr in the same grade. They would, all re they would all have resulted in a low C slash D in 2016. What's really interesting is that when you look at the percentage of students who are identified as Somali, Nigerian or Ghanaian in that year, who got three A's or above at A level, you see a very 
interesting pattern here. You'd probably expect to see that the Nigerian, a higher proportion, a higher percentage of them would have got three A's. And that's true. 7.2% of the Nigerian pupils at A level in 2016 got three A's or more. In second place, if you like, were Somali pupils. 4.2% of Somali pupils got three A's or above at A level in that year. And then in third place there were the Ghanaian pupils at 3%. Now there is a little bit more information though here, a little bit more data that I want to show you that when you look at the percentage of pupils in those three ethnic groups at A level who got A, A or B or higher, nearly 14% of Nigerian students in that year got to A, A, B plus. Then in second place with around 10% of Ghanaian pupils and then in third place around about 8% of Somali pupils. So that's really interesting because quite often you see people talking about Somali pupils as if they're like the laggards, they're bringing down the average for African students. But as we're seeing here, this is very, very far from the truth as, as far as we can you know, derive it from the available data. What if we looked at the black African overall percentage of students at A-level who got three A's or above in that year? You'll see that in 2016, about 5% of black African pupils got three A's or above at A-level. What would happen if we swapped out the black African, the single black African category and replaced it with categories for Ghanaian, Nigerian and, and Somali pupils? This is what we'd see. Very interestingly, you'll see there that Ghanaians would now be right at the bottom there alongside black Caribbean pupils with 3%. Somalis would be above them at 4%. And then you see Nigerian pupils would be right, kind of heading toward mid table at 7% of them getting three A's or above. They would be above Pakistani, above well, about the same as Pakistani, slightly above Bangladeshi, above black cover, Somali, black Caribbean, Ghanaian, just a little bit behind mixed white and black African. And there are some other data as well from 2018, which I will include on my Substack. Remember, that's elliwananda.substack.com. To conclude, my overall conclusion is that those people who think that West African children perform much, much better than uh, African children from other countries, uh, the data doesn't really bear that out, apart from showing that Nigerian students do, it seems, tend to perform higher than, than, than uh, pupils from other African countries. I want to thank you so much. I look forward, to, I really do look forward to your thoughts on this. Do you think that these, these data are robust and, you know, we can, we can rely on these or do you think I'm missing something? And if you know something that I don't know, if you know somewhere I can go to find better information, better data, better, better, better analysis, please do let me know. Does this even matter? Do you think this even matters? You know, all this talk about educational performance. I do. I think that educational outcomes are one of the critically important things as far as determining our life chances, frankly. But do you disagree? Do you think that's actually, it's, it's not important? Do you think there are other things that actually are, are, are much more important? Make sure, please, you do subscribe. Make sure you share. Make sure you like. And also, there are other videos that you might like to watch if you've got this far. There's this video here, which YouTube will recommend based on its algorithm. And also, this video here, I think, uh, dovetails and would go very well with this video as a follow-up uh, follow-up video to watch from from on this topic all right take care of yourselves thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time peace